Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Awesome. This is such a fabulous group. Um, Lisa Ann, thank you so much for having me. It's fabulous to be here. Um, and Katie Callens and Beth Sturgeon, our team from Google who put this together, um, fabulous job. Thank you guys. And we are thrilled to be your hosts today. Um, as Lisa Ann mentioned, I'm pretty new to the California community. I'm just moving out from DC a few months ago, so I'm really excited to join this community of awesome women and men that are working in this field. So thank you so much for having me. All right. OK, no worries. Well, I will kick things off, and then we'll get the slides rolling. Uh, so as folks probably know, here at Google, we've taken on some major challenges, or what we like to think of as moonshots. And we try to take on things that we see as really mattering in the world at a global scale and making things for people better. So you may be familiar with our efforts to put every book online for free or to drive every road around the world. You may have seen our Street View car out front here and map it and make that available to everyone. And then, of course, now our efforts to put cars on the road without people on them in our driverless cars. And for many years, Google has also been quietly changing the way that people use energy. And of course, with the climate negotiations set to kick off in Paris less than a month from now, we think that this couldn't be a more relevant time to be talking about these issues. Climate change is such a large challenge that no single company, country, can solve it alone. But as folks have seen, many governments are putting forward strong emissions reduction targets, and companies are taking action too by reducing their own footprints and investing in clean energy. And we are working to do our part. So as I know you heard uh, this morning from my colleague Joyce Dickerson, uh, we are working to build the world's most efficient computer network, enabling millions to be far more efficient in their computing. We're also catalyzing the industry as both a consumer and a major investor in renewable energy. And we're trying to work on big ideas that we hope one day will make sustainability a reality for billions. So as you heard, our data centers are the engines of the internet. And we're always trying to get the most computing power out of the greatest efficiency for every square foot that we build or every server that we install. And this is not only good from a sustainability perspective, but this makes good business sense for us as a company. Because as we all know, the cheapest power is the power that we don't use. And it's this highly efficient network of data centers that lets us process and store things in the cloud so that you can get them from the internet whenever you want, whether it's your music or your videos or your documents. And it's in this way that the cloud empowers millions of individuals and businesses to be more sustainable. Because data centers, of course, can utilize computing resources way more efficiently than a local server closet down your hall. And so a recent study that looked at a US government agency, the General Services Administration, that I actually used to work with a lot, uh, they, using pretty conservative numbers, said that they were able to reduce their, uh, their energy use by 90% when they switched over to Gmail. And based on some analysis done by uh, Berkeley Labs, shifting the 86 million office workers around the country to the cloud could save up to 87% of IT energy, which is enough to power the city of LA for one year. Now I'm just going to see, since I have some cool slides in here, if I can get these advanced. Otherwise, oh, here we go. All right. <laughs> so there you go. Los Angeles for one year. Pretty cool. The clicker does not work, unfortunately. But that's all right. <laughs> That's good. I'm all for that. Aha. Excellent. Technology. We're Google. We got this. OK. <laughs> and of course, we're also committed to sustainability here in our office environment, which you're getting to enjoy today. This means things like installing nearly two megawatts of solar across our campus here in Mountain View and also encouraging air pollution reductions through trying to cr promote more sustainable commuting here in the Bay Area. So we've committed to reduce our vehicle commuting 36% by transitioning our employees to shuttles, to carpools, to public transit, biking, and walking. And we've also deployed the largest workplace charging infrastructure in the country right here in Mountain View. Now, renewable energy is another big focus for us. 
both as an investor and a purchaser, we're really working to catalyze the industry and enable a greener internet. So not only are we making our data centers far more efficient, but we're also committed to powering them with renewable energy. So in total, currently, Google, we're purchasing about 37% of our energy from renewable sources, and we're committed to getting all the way to 100%. Now, the reason that this makes business sense for us is that in many markets around the world, renewable energy is cost competitive with other types of power. And by signing these long-term power purchase agreements for 10 or for 20 years, that gives us price certainty so that we're not as exposed to the price fluctuations in the market. And already at 37% of our power, we are currently the world's largest corporate buyer of renewable energy. So to date, we're consuming about 1.1 gigawatts of renewables here in the US and in Europe through our purchases. And we've really only just begun. Back in July, we signed uh, the White House's American Business Act on Climate Pledge. And in that pledge, we committed to triple our purchases of renewable energy over the next decade. So our renewable, power, our renewable energy purchases combined with our great high quality carbon offsets program has made us a carbon neutral company for the last eight years in a row. And our carbon footprint is growing more slowly than our business. Now we're also investing directly in innovative large scale energy projects that accelerate renewable development and bring down the cost for everyone. So to date, we've made investments in 2.5 billion in renewable energy projects that represents about 2.9 gigawatts of power. And these investments include some of the largest wind and solar projects here in the US, as well as some really transformative investments. For example, we were an early investor in Solar City, who I know you're gonna hear from later today. We invested $500 million to support the installation of 25,000 residential systems across 15 states in the US and also saw great returns. So again, a really good business decision for us. And another challenge that we're interested in solving is that the fact that there are 1.3 billion people around the world that still don't have access to electricity. And so one of our first investments in an emerging market was in South Africa. And this is the largest PV project in Africa that just recently came online. And just a few weeks ago, you may have seen, we made an exciting announcement about an investment in a Lake Turkana wind project in northern Kenya. And when this project is complete, it will bring 310 megawatts of clean energy onto Kenya's grid, which is enough to power 2 million households across the country. And through new innovative projects, we're also trying to create greater access to affordable, cleaner power solutions and empower our users to take action on sustainability in their own lives and in their communities. So I want to give you a few examples of what that looks like. So Project Sunroof. This is uh, an initiative that we launched over the summer. And it's a new online tool that's based on some of the great mapping technology from our geo colleagues that work in this building that we're in today to help determine whether your roof is well suited to solar panels and how much money you might be able to save if you installed solar on your roof. So the way this tool is ultimately designed to work is that you would enter your home address and then you could see the potential of your roof and then be easily connected to a solar developer to take the next step. Now, last year, the Environmental Defense Fund and Google Earth Outreach teamed up to launch a series of maps that show methane leaks from natural gas pipelines under the cities of Boston, Indianapolis, and Staten Island, creating the potential to reduce huge numbers of greenhouse gas emissions and create greater safety. And in July, our, our GEO team announced a partnership with a local um, startup here in the Bay Area, Aclima, that has air quality sensors. And so we're attaching those air quality sensors to our street view cars. And we started by driving the streets in Denver, Colorado and collecting data points on air quality, things like nitrogen oxide, carbon monoxide. And then just a few weeks ago, uh, we announced a commitment to do this in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, and in the Central Valley. And the ultimate idea being uh, that we're hoping to ultimately bring these Street View cars data to our Google Maps so you can make decisions about bringing an asthmatic child to the park or your bike route based on air quality. So a few other quick examples. Um, Makani is an X project. It's a wind kite that would have the potential to generate um, wind through these kites at a lower cost 
and with far less materials. And of course, we have our self-driving car project, which has the potential to ease congestion and fuel consumption. So these are just a few examples of the ways that we're trying to make sustainability a reality, both for ourselves and for our users. And we believe that this is only just the beginning of what needs to be done. And in Paris, we hope to see a strong global agreement reached. And we see climate truly as one of the most significant challenges of our time. And rising to that challenge really involves a complex mix of policy, of technology, international cooperation, and of course, corporate action. So we're committed to, com to continuing this action for many years to come and continuing to transform the way the world uses energy. Thank you.